Hey y'all, my name's Tyson, and this time around, let's have a look at the extension Open Cut List. So there's a few extensions. In fact, if we go to the warehouse, the extension warehouse, and just search for Cut List, there are a few options out there, um, and some are, are work uh, quite well. They're, they're fairly simple. We're looking at this one open cut list and it's it's remarkably um deep and powerful and remarkably it's free to use although you can support the developers uh in in creating new features all that said we're going to take kind of a top level just simple introductory view of it not get into all the many many deep features that it has but let's jump in and see what we can do with this Okay, so once you've installed the extension, um, there's two things to know about making this work. One is that it only works on components. Okay, so if I, for example, look at this back, uh, back piece, it's a component. And so all of the elements here are components, however, this side assembly is a nested component, right? So I've got this leg and this one and this one. Each of these is components. You can still use nesting and organization. It's going to work fine. Just be aware that it does not work on groups. So all of these pieces are components. The other thing it works on is materials. So if we go ahead and open this open cut list and let's look at materials here. It works on any materials in your model. And you can see that a number of these colors come from my component here. And we don't need those, uh, but we could edit the properties. So right now we've got one actual um, material with some properties and we're gonna create another to have a better look at this. But let's cancel this for a moment, go into parts and again, keep in mind what we've got here. I don't have materials assigned to the shelves here, but uh, the legs I do. And if we said generate, the dark hardwood material that I have selected, it actually gives us um, all of the elements in our model, this great cut list of Here's the various pieces for the, the legs, back legs, the connectors. Pretty remarkable. It's going to do more, and let's have a look. So let's create a new material. Let's say that we want to create just a simple, you know, let's say these are made out of plywood, something like that. So I'm going to name this material, let's say birch ply. And then I'm going to select all of these <laughs> and use that same material and paint all of these with that. Now, one thing to keep in mind, just so we know, these shelves are three quarter inches thick. This is half inch and this trim up front is quarter inch. Mm -hmm but all of these are painted with the birch ply. Now, how's that gonna work for us? Let's find out. So if I open the open cut list, click on materials, right here under this little edit property, we can come in and what's most important is that you define what this is. The uh, hardwood was a solid wood. This will be a sheet good. There are other options more than we're going to get into. Um, if you're into, you know, using dimensional two by fours and other things, or want to work with veneer or even hardware, this in our case is a sheet good. And by doing that, it automatically um, assumes certain attributes such as common sheet goods come in half inch, three quarter, one inch, at least here in the States. Um, you can set your overall um, 
settings to to default to millimeters. Um, but here, the common sizes that we might find are a four by eight sheet and so forth. So all that's in here. And all I have to do is click apply. And the only thing we added was that it's a sheet good. And now this is a material. So now when we come into open cut list and we say parts, it's going to ask us to generate a part, um, generate a parts list. Let me pull this over here. This time now we've got all of these different birch um, ply. And it, it's a little silly. We, uh, of course, that, oh, would we really use a whole sheet of three quarter and a sheet for a half inch? And, and that front wouldn't would likely not be applied, but we can see what it's doing for us all the same. So let's look at this three quarter. These are all these main pieces. And by selecting the one, it's focused on just the one. So I, I, I need to deselect and regenerate the whole thing. The cutting diagram here. So let's generate a cutting diagram. What kind of panel are we using? Four by eight. Go ahead and generate it for us. Now I've got each of my panels in the model with a cutting diagram to say, here's how uh, we can cut this out with some efficiency. Now we can regenerate this because maybe I look at this and I say, um, you know what? Uh, try a different optimization level. And my leftovers, um, I can say, I can change this and say, and this just designates, you know, what pieces to keep or what pieces you might toss. Another thing to keep in mind is right. I'm, I've got a quarter, I'm sorry, a half inch trim and one eighth inch blade. All of these it's accounting for. Maybe I only need one quarter inch trim, but go ahead and generate with that. And now I've got a different configuration and I might be cutting this board roughly in half and then cutting this piece off. And, and so it's optimizing it for us and giving us the cutting paths. It's remarkable. Um, of course, we can print this, export it. What's really cool is I, I can actually click on any one of these pieces. So this one here, and it's going to identify it and identify the grain direction, which is something that you can tweak is how it wants to show grain direction, even though we don't have a, a texture on here, but it's just automatically assuming grain over length because that's the default setting. Let's change this up a little bit. So we've got shelf one and so forth. And these is just this because I copied one component and didn't rename them. Side, same here, side wall, and these aren't named well. Um, but you can see the piece. We can click on a piece and get more detail about it. If we, so let me close this down real quick. That's just for one. Let's say, well, okay, that's fine. We're going to be making um, three shelves. So I've just duplicated it. If I selected just one shelf, it would focus on that, but I'm going to deselect so that it will focus on the entire model. Let's open it up, parts, generate. And at this time, let's go back to that three quarter inch and cutting diagram. Um, we've got same settings we had previously. And this time it's telling us, okay, well, I'm gonna configure this differently. It's gonna require two sheets and it's optimized in this way. And again, we could go back and say, could, you know, let's have a look at this differently. So a really remarkable, um, print this out, export it. One of the things that, that is cool is, for example, this dark hardwood, if we, this is not sheet goods, so it's not giving us a full cutting diagram, but we could say things like, you know, just the labels, but let's draw an overview and I'll just make this black and white opaque. And you'll see that what this is, is 
all of those um, pieces are here represented in the model. And they're labeled so that when we have these labels here, they're associated. So again, we take that, generate it, print it, associate it with our cut list. Let's do one more thing just in the spirit of, you know, kind of what we can do with this. Let's say, okay, we want to optimize this. I'm going to come back here and um, say, okay, what is this? Three quarters. Let's see if we can quickly reconfigure this whole shelf and say, we have a really nice half inch plywood. Can we get this entire shelf out of one sheet of plywood? So let's find out. I'm going to come in, uh, reduce this. Okay, so I've done that to those components. This, I'm going to need to do this to each shelf. So I'm double clicking. And that way, those are all half inch. Um, this front trim, we're just going to get rid of. But that should give us an entire, um, so we've got half inch shelves, half inch uh, siding, and half inch here. We just need to make sure that we come in to this and paint this. And we can actually do this um, directly from the extension. If I go here, I can say birch ply and actually paint. Oh, it doesn't want to paint inside here. So that's okay. Uh, now that I've opened it up, let's try that again. And you see it's painting the other components as well. All right, we've reconfigured this. Everything should be half inch. Let's find out. Let me pull this over here. Parts, generate. It's all half inch birch. We've got our cutting but let's see what the diagram looks like. And there it is. Uh, we can. One, one sheet and it's telling us here's a, a suggested cutting pattern and we could get this whole thing out of one sheet. Ah, that is so cool. And we have it all right there, wow. So, <laughs> that's just awesome. I don't know what else to say about that. Like, like I say, it actually really is. You can assign um, a lot more attributes actually to the various uh, pieces. You can assign um, prices based on board foot or or area or just poor good. You can assign hardware and other attributes as well. It's far deeper than we explored. I just think at uh, an ease of use level, of just, you know, you saw how easy it was to generate cut lists and cutting diagrams, uh, things like this. Thank you to the team who made this extension. It's remarkable. It's remarkable that it's free, but like I say, um, they are continuing development. And if you want to say thanks or support them, um, that option is there. Um, you can just go over and and see what they're working on, make suggestions, and contribute if you like to. Uh, oh, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> standing in front here just to sponsor. Uh, so that's it. Thank you all very much. Um, I hope that was interesting. If you already use this extension or if now you think you will, let us know the type of stuff that you plan to build or use it on. Um, and get out and get in the shop because that that sounds fun thank you all uh, as always like subscribe leave, leave us suggestions for other topics we can cover and we'll see you next time